Starting off with the case orbs, though. So starting strong. Uh, so Kamala Harris, vice president, posted a picture for Thanksgiving with her husband, and in the background was a gas stove. Kevin Sorbo retweeted that picture saying, I thought gas stoves were bad for the environment. And um, so, yeah, they are like, first off, absolutely 100 percent. That's undeniable. You're burning a fucking fossil fuel in your home. Duh. Mm -hmm. It's bad for the environment. Uh, secondly, like th this, this is one of those things where like a lot of people were retweeting this and like Thinking calling it some saying it was uh, like hypocrisy on their part because like oh they're banning gas stoves and yet they have gas stoves and it's like no they're not banning gas stoves they're banning gas stoves in new construction but so here's the thing i have okay um do you, are you familiar with the channel technology connections i'm not actually no okay the guy's a complete fucking nerd um okay. and it, it's basically like it, it's adhd hyper focus candy and like so so he he goes into great detail about stuff that like nobody even fucking cares about but like it'll be like oh you have piqued my interest i will watch this 30 minute video on the popcorn button of a microwave oh i've seen the i've seen the thumbnails for yeah. his videos yes that's the one i've seen okay he's he's fucking great um, but like, so he, he did a video where, um, he, he was talking about, um, it, it was his video on kettles and like why kettles aren't popular in North America and like spoiler alert, the reason kettles aren't popular in North America, or at least not as popular as they are in England is because we don't drink tea as much. And as a tea drinker, I'm like, yeah, that's the one thing I use my kettle for. So if I didn't drink tea, I probably wouldn't have a kettle. The only reason I had one for a while was for uh, cup ramen. Um, oh yeah, we're we're getting we're getting to that. We've got um, oh fuck off right click menu. Uh, Adam Broughton sent five dollars. Says I forked out almost three thousand dollars for an induction stove in my condo, and I love it. We're getting there. Um, so in his kettle video, he was like, because that's one of the hypotheses that it was like why kettles aren't popular is because uh, we have uh, 120 volt uh, wiring, whereas they have 240. So it takes longer to boil water, even with a kettle. Mm -hmm. And yes, that's true, but kettles still boil water faster than the stove does. And so he did a bunch of tests and he found that like, um, in as, like, as far as like how quick a stove will heat something, induction stoves are the best. Okay. Um, an electric stove that is just the bare exposed the coil. element, the coil element, that's the second best. Uh, an electric stove under a glass top. That's the third best. That's what I have. The gas stoves fucking sucked. The only... Because so... the thing with the gas stove is you're not just heating... Like, when you put it on an electric stove, especially one that has, like, different size options of it, like, because my, my stove is an electric stove under a glass top. Um, and the two front elements have options. You've got the, the big circle that you can turn on, or you've got the little circle, and then the one on the right has like an even smaller circle. So like you can make the stove fit your pot so that it's only mm. heating your pot. It's not sending heat up around the sides. You can't do that with gas. And so with gas, what happens is like a lot of the heat just escapes at the sides. That does end up working out well for people who cook in walks though. There are some cookwares that are, that are made for sure. that type of environment. Sure, but most people don't. Mm -hmm. Not in North America, anyway. Um, also, I've been using woks on electric stoves, and it's fine. Just saying. Yeah, that too. Um, yeah, so, like, as long as, like, so the gas stove, like, it wastes so much heat not heating up the thing that you're heating up. And then uh, he, he actually measured the uh, CO2 levels in his living room while he cooked dinner one night, and with a gas stove, the CO2 levels doubled. So it's really shitty for indoor air quality. It's really shitty for efficiency. So, yeah, and and he did like he he did his measurements with boiling water. So like you boil the same amount of water on each things. It boils fastest in the kettle, second fastest in induction, and like third fastest so on only, electric. So not only and do you have all the escaping gas heat. was the slowest. Not only do you have all the escaping heat, it's not. It, it's literally just polluting your breathing environment on top of the heat just escaping and not getting used for the purpose you're yeah. spending it on. Yeah, so you're Jesus wasting money. Christ. You're wasting money heating up your house rather than 
the um Oh, we got another $250 from Jet saying, hope this helps. Thank you very much. That does indeed help. We're at 628836 which is amazing, but still uh, $3,700 shy. A little more than $3,700 shy of the $10,000 goal. Come on, where's my OCD people at? Come on. We, we raised so much <laughs> money trying to just make things even and then other people fucking with them. I don't know. Is exploiting mental illness... To raise money for charity, a bad thing. It's it's doing an evil for the purpose of a good. So you are you are currently an anti-hero. Okay. So anyway, so Sorb says I thought gas stoves were bad for the environment. Absolutely. But you know what else is bad for the environment? Manufacturing. So if you already have a gas stove um, and it works fine, and you have no reason to replace it it's probably better for the environment as a whole to not replace it with an electric stove. Um, it might be better for your family to replace it with an electric stove because like, you know, the CO2 is just the easiest to measure toxin that is given off by burning fossil fuels inside your home. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's just, it's really weird to think of how, how married people get to these things. It's, What's the best way to put this? Because I, I covered the, the Dave Rubin thing where he was talking about the gas stoves and freaking out about them despite it being just a building code thing where you can literally... Yeah. You can buy a gas stove and take it into your house and nobody will stop you. Yeah. Like, there's nothing just, stopping just, that. They just can't put it in a new construction home and sell the home to the first owner with a... So like, they like people just need to buy their own gas stoves if they want a gas stove. It's the same thing with um when you're when they're building new like high rise apartments, they can't put a gas stove in the high rise apartment. Like yeah. that's it, that's and that's mainly what it's for more than anything. But a lot of people when they're buying a, a fully furnished home, might not come with those appliances. Sometimes if they're not if they're not fully furnished, they're just buying the so the house that's just been built. They might not have it at all anyway. Well, so there's also like a convenience factor in that like. I just I just spent a thousand dollars on a microwave because we're we're getting our kitchen renovated, and it, like the like as part of, like we're renovating the house so that we can have not four kids sharing one room. Yeah, like we're we're finishing the basement and getting everything done proper down there so that, like you know they can get out in case of fire and stuff like that, um, and like having some basement bedrooms. Um, and as part of that, we're also renovating the kitchen. It's like, okay, well, this is our budget, and you can do the basement for under that budget? Sure, let's do some kitchen stuff. And I just spent $1,000 on a microwave, which is fucking overkill, uh, but it's because it's a microwave that also has, like, heating elements in it that it can act as, like, an air fryer or a convection oven or something. That's one of the multi-purpose so, ones. Yeah, so, and, and like, normally I'd say, like, no, if, if you don't, like, I would probably not use this regularly, except we are a family of seven people where one person is a vegetarian. So there's often like, okay, well, your vegetarian thing requires different cooking parameters, but you're just the one person out of seven of us. So it's just going in the oven at the same temperature as everything else. And like, if it's a little bit burned, sorry. It's just kind of how so, it, how it so has now to be. So like I, I got this extra, like I, I paid extra for the microwave because like, okay, well now we can cook stuff for her that is, um, you know, it's is actually going to be more enjoyable for her and it, it like is going to be cooked better. So like, that's why we did that. So like, this, it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, I could have, you know, I could have spent that money on like upgrading my stove to induction or something, which is the best kind of stove as far as efficiency is concerned. But, like, there's also family efficiency to consider. Stryker I don't even says, know why I started making that point. I don't remember. Stryker says, how would you connect the gas stove into a new house? So, as somebody who had to get a house renovated, uh, there is a thing that will happen where your uh, contractor will go, hey, there is room here for a gas hookup. Would you like us to just put the line in? Because that's, that's all it really is, is them putting a line in, and then the appliance does most of the regulating. Um, and if you're on city gas then they would just put a line in for the city gas or the line would be there and available and you just wouldn't use it all the time. So what will happen is during the construction process, they'll go, hey, you have a choice when we're putting in your furnace. Do you want it to be a furnace attached to the gas line you have or do you want it to be electric? And then 
what used to be the case is they would go as we're putting in your stove do you want it to be an electric stove hooked up to this uh this power meter here or do you want it to be attached to the same line and you get you get to pick the things for me i went electric stove and i have gas heat but that gas heat doesn't mean anything because my central is out but that's the point there is that they there's nothing saying that you can't have the hookup it's the stove itself because the gas furnace is not as inefficient as the the stove is the escaping heat is the point of the furnace so lord of us collect says i thought you spent money on a microwave because one of your kids blasted the old one with the fire extinguisher the old one still works however having that ammonia whatever it is powder dust all over electronic stuff is probably not good for longevity my, excuse me so that uh, that microwave be. is that microwave might not be much longer for this world. I don't know. Um, the main thing is, like, as part of the kitchen renovations, we're, like, moving the... Uh, we've got... The, our our stove is, like, right up against three cupboards that we've never been able to use in the 12 years I've lived in this house because the stove is up against them. Mm. So as part of the kitchen renovations, like, let's move the stove over. We can, like, wall off this doorway that nobody ever fucking uses anyway. And uh, like put the stove over there, and as part of that, we're getting like an over-the-range microwave to get give us more counter space instead of having the countertop microwave. And uh, yeah, just the the fact that that microwave might die at any minute because of all the uh, fire extinguisher dust that's in it is better just to have the bonus. <laughs> it's been a good microwave though. Anyway, Prager, you says name one thing the government should not be involved in. Um. The genders of the people that are getting married. Or how about just marriage in general? Like, I understand the idea of, like, registering for tax purposes. Mm -hmm. But aside from that... They shouldn't have a marriage, say. Marriage is none of their fucking business. That's a private relationship. Dress code. I, Dress code. I out, Outside of being, like, cover your genitals. Oh, along those uh, along those lines, Naramda put says underwear choices. <laughs> Yeah, we don't want the Mormon government saying that we need to have the magic underwear to go outside legally. Well, you, okay, you need <laughs> to qualify for the magic underwear in Mormonism, though. Ooh, Alexis Markle says healthcare. Uh, no, strong disagree there. No, no, they should be involved in healthcare. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, it turns out that not having the government involved in healthcare means that your healthcare is unregulated. And when your healthcare is unregulated, like just not even counting single payer healthcare as a thing, but when your government is not regulating healthcare, you get the problem we have with American chiropractic. Uh, so for those who don't know, there are some countries that have very, very regulated chiropractic practices where it can be used for things like loosening up a pinched nerve, something like that. In America, however, we have unregulated chiropractic. You can get a license from anywhere that says that they have it and there's no bar, mm -hmm. there's no nothing. The result of this is that uh, you can go, 90% of the chiropractic offices in Georgia will be anti-vaxxers telling you that popping your back will cure your cancer. That's what you get when you have unregulated medicine of any kind. Apparently, do not Alex, Alex, Alex Markle misunderstood the question. I think they um, might have heard name one thing the government should be involved in. Okay, fair enough. So, yeah. Um, fair point. Thank you for the correction. I've, I've, I'm like, I've, I've seen this person before. I feel like they have similar opinions to mine. So that, that was kind of surprising to me. Mm. Um, but yeah, so uh, just... People, people who are against government-provided health care generally would say that they're against it because, like, oh, I don't want to pay for someone else's health care because, like, they're taxing me to pay for someone else's health care. It's like, what do you think insurance is? Like, insurance is collectivizing health care. You are paying your premiums. Those premiums go to paying for other people's health care that did not use the services or that did use the services that because like most of the like most months, most people don't use health care services. Yep. Um, so those premiums go to paying for the people that are, are using the services. But the problem is so with so like either way, whether you go with insurance or whether you go with the government, it's collective. It's just but which one is going to be better at it. Yeah, so the problem with insurance is with private insurance companies, their whole thing is we need to turn a profit. So it goes from like, 
just everybody covers everybody else's healthcare expenses to we need to cover everybody's healthcare expenses and make extra money on top of that. So it becomes much more expensive than if it's done through the government who is not concerned about profits. Yep. See, a, a government generally so, has a incentive themselves, if they are the only ones who are dealing with you, they have an incentive on keeping you healthy. Because if you are healthy, you can work. Then it costs you less money. Yeah. And if, that too, yeah. And if you're healthy, you can work. And if you can work, you can pay taxes. That, like, just from a, just an Occam's razor point of view, taking any other tinfoil hat nonsense out of the, out of the equation... If you are healthy, you can work. If you can work, you can pay taxes. Therefore, a government is incentivized in keeping you healthy. Did every single nut job that's like the, the government's trying to keep us unhealthy for this, that, and no, it's private industry that's doing that. It's been that the entire time because private industry does not want you healthy because a sick person buys medicine. Government, on the other hand, yeah. would rather you be healthy and working and stimulating the economy. That's what they care about. Yeah. So um, I just I just looked up the numbers. In 2023, the average cost for a family health care plan through an employer-sponsored health insurance policy is uh, $23,968 for the year. That's just under $2,000 a month in health, in health insurance premiums. That's not including the deductible. That's not including co-pays or anything like that. That's just your premium is almost $2,000 a month. As a Canadian who pays for health care through taxes, I have never paid more than $700 per year for my entire family. So like, that's the difference in cost when you have it and both are collectivized. So like, get out of here with that like oh i don't want to pay for someone else's healthcare bullshit you what already do you think, are what do you think your premium pays for that's what your premium pays for it's not paying for you in the future it's paying for other people who are needing health care now back when raz and i were together i paid for her health care and it was 450 dollars a month that's that's what it was yep. i could not afford health care for myself because we had to make a choice between which one of us would get health care and raz got the health care yeah so, yeah, if if the government's in it, they don't have the profit motive. So it's much cheaper because they, they don't have to like, I don't, they don't have to look at it and say, like, I have to cover everybody's expenses and then make profit. They just look at it as I have to cover everybody's expenses. And yet, PragerU being the type of people they're going to, they're going to have, I guarantee you, under their under their thing there's going to be people who were like the government shouldn't be involved in anything oh guaranteed yeah 100 percent. they're a bunch of like anarchist nut jobs and like i wouldn't say anarchist i'd say libertarian Liber libertarian libertarian libertarians pretend to be anarchists but they're not i am an anarcho capitalist and what that means is i'm a fuck what that means is I liked Atlas Shrugged for some reason, which is a terribly written book. It's like, um... And have, have you seen the movie trilogy? I haven't seen the movie trilogy. Oh, I've... It's, it's so bad. It's one of those good bad movies where it's like, oh, I'm in, like, mwah. It's so beautiful. You're enjoying how, how terrible it is. is. Yeah, I mean, there were a couple of moments of sadness, like Robert Picardo is in one of them. He's the guy who played the doctor on Star Trek Voyager. Mm -hmm. He's like, "Oh, come on. You're give, you're you're lending yourself to Ayn Rand shit. Come on." At a certain point a paycheck's a paycheck. I get it. His whole thing on Star Trek Voyager was I'm giving healthcare for free. Yeah, but again, that's a that's a character he played. Yeah, I know. I I say this knowing that Discord and Q are the same person. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> There's a line. Yeah, John Delancey just is Q. That's just how it is. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Capturing Christianity says, I don't like suffering does not equal God has no reason to allow suffering. Um. So I can I can agree with this. So I do agree with this, but also I still see the problem of evil as a valid argument against Christianity. So like, I, yeah, maybe there is a reason to allow suffering. However, the degree of suffering and how easy it would be to alleviate that suffering for an omnipotent being does not match up. 
my my biggest argument against this has always been if you truly have an omni god then he is also by being all knowledgeable he's infinitely creative which mm -hmm. means he can conceive of any number of ways moreover he can create any number of ways that you can learn a lesson the whole point of suffering in any narrative is usually either as punishment or for learning a lesson and if it's used as punishment, it's also so you can learn a lesson through the punishment. That's the point. An infinitely creative god can take anything and turn it into anything. And to argue that he can't is to limit your god, which I don't think Christians are in the market of doing. Yeah, so I don't know if it was capturing Christianity that I responded to or if it was someone else. But like with regards to the problem of evil, they were saying that um, the reason God allows suffering is for personal growth and like the personal growth that can be brought about through suffering is a great enough good to offset the suffering. Now, first and foremost, that's utilitarian ethics where it's like, I have assigned a value to this particular thing, which means like this good thing outweighs the bad thing that was, that was required to bring about that good thing. Yeah, it's, it's like pulling ends something justifies out, the means. It's pulling something outside of the Christian mythos to ad yeah. hoc justify so the Christian mythos. Yeah, so that so that's not so that like people who make the moral argument would argue that like oh well morality itself, the fact that we have a moral sense is what points to God. And so like like anyone who denies God, like they're they're denying where our morals originate. They can't justify morality. And yet they will use secular justification to say like, oh, well, bringing about greater good from suffering justifies the suffering. That's utilitarian ethics. That is appealing to secular morality to justify God's actions or inactions. Um, it's like the people who but, use like Aristotelian philosophy to justify the Bible. Yeah, but like more than that, though, they, they also like... In the same video, the person I was responding to, which I think it was capturing Christianity, but yeah, like mm. I said, I, I might be misremembering because I, I respond to a lot of people. It might have been someone else. But um, justify like the death of children, the premature death of children it was like, oh, well, well, these people have been denied the personal growth that would have been achieved through suffering here on Earth. It's like, oh, well, no, they, you can still have personal growth in heaven when everything is perfect. It's just not the same, but it's it's equally good. It's like, OK, well, if it's not the then same, but it is the suffering. It, yeah. Well, if it's not, well, it's, it's not the same, though. It's different. However, the, the whole it's equally good thing kind of. It means it's the same. Yeah, it means it's the same. like, yeah. <laughs> well, no, even even if it's still different, if it's equally good, then, then it's, that means then it's fine. That is fine. Like you, like you don't need the suffering. Wait, if it's equally good, so like the outcome is equally good, but yeah. the suffering was not important, then actually it's the greater good. If we're just using like a yeah. net a net measurement of good, oh, we you don't. But serious, that's utilitarian ethics. That's dirty. We don't want to touch that. <laughs> we, don't, we don't want to touch that. Meanwhile, they're touching that. That's a yeah. that's that's very Catholic Church. We don't touch kids. Meanwhile, oh, that's right. He's a Catholic now, isn't he? Oh yeah. Fuck, I forgot about that. Oh, I have a. I want to. He he makes he makes me fucking mad because he he increased his Patreon donors by like three thousand dollars in a month by converting to Catholicism, then being like, "I'm running a deficit. I need more money." I'm like, it would be so easy for me to fucking convert to Christianity, and be like, "Hallelujah! I'm starting the Vice Rhino Ministry," and then get a bunch of Christians to donate to me because I'm the like obviously I was a hellbound atheist before, but now I've seen the light. I felt like a... I, I'd I make so much money, and it would be tax-free. It'd be fucking tax-free. It should be 501c3. I pay tens of thousands of dollars in taxes every year. I could avoid that if I converted to Christianity, and I'd make more money. Like, oh, fucking... I, I owe... I, can I... I want to join the bad guys, Cirrus. You want to join the bad guys so bad? Guys. Rhino. Let me join the bad guys. Stop, somebody, stop holding me back. As somebody who owed... Ten thousand dollars last year in taxes. It was, it was more like two thousand after I itemized all of my my stuff that I spent on channel and such and office, all that, all that things you have to feed the IRS. So they're like, yes, you do operate a business. Um, still owed over two thousand dollars, and that was not fun to pay. Please don't join the bad guys. <laughs> I know, I understand, I empathize, I'm with you. Don't do it. No, you know, I have, 
I have so many videos at this point talking about how I wish I could join the bad guys that like, if I actually did, they'd pull that up and be like, no, this guy's just bullshitting us. And I would be. Like, I, I'm not going to lie. But I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a good liar, though, so. Yesterday, I received a, a just during the stream, I received a, a very large sum of money in a, in a donation. And I was like, I felt like the luckiest person in the world as it all disappeared into bills and to the credit card debt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah that's how it goes i was just like hey i have it and then i literally like i paid the accounts and showed it on stream going like full transparency here's where the money's gone i don't have it anymore oh, again lord. don't go to the villain site i understand your predicament i'm in it too please don't <laughs> lord of us collects says sacred night sacred rights include picking your nose did i pick my nose on stream just now i'm sorry if i did that <laughs> i don't think i did that at least you didn't do the nick fuentes thing he that picked, could be so many things. He picked his nose and ate it on camera when he okay. didn't think it was looking at him. That tracks. It does. He's a he's a literal child. Ugh. God damn it. Anyway, capturing Christianity um, said it again in a tweet just by itself says God is perfect. Um, perfect is a meaningless descriptor on its own. Perfect what? Perfect butt plug. God, playground. God fills that hole perfectly and God stimulates the prostate. God fills me with love. Oh, God, yeah. fill me with your love. Lord Jesus, come inside me. God, but, the king of this, edging. His second coming has taken 2,000 years. Like, Christians always say God is perfect as if that means something. It doesn't mean something in, unless you say what he is perfect at. What is he perfect at being? Like, we've got Naramda puts in the chat saying perfectly fictional. Like, yeah, that's actually so that's it. That's something that can be perfect. Fun paradox. If God is all powerful, he is perfectly fictional because that is within that is within that scope. Yeah, if God but... cannot be fictional, then it's outside of that scope. But I mean, also, <laughs> if like if if God is omnipresent, God is already inside my butthole, filling that space filling perfectly. Mm hmm. So God is the perfect butt plug. And he always will be. Yeah. Oh, this is fun. So uh, Joe from Jers says uh, she retweeted George Takei saying that he's going to vote for Biden, saying I'm 49 and I'll probably be voting to reelect both President Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris in 2024. Pass it on. Kyle Rittenhouse responded with gross. So yep. she responded to that by saying, fuck off, Kyle. The grownups are talking, <laughs> which... He responded, so much for a grown-up telling a 20-year-old to fuck off, but I guess that's the left for you. It's like, Kyle, you're 20. Are you saying that's not a grown-up? Are you, like, does he still think of himself as a child? I mean, he's been treated like a child hero by the right. He's been, he's literally been paraded around. This, this dude, through doing what he did, got rewarded by being incredibly famous and getting... Like, I can, as, as somebody who's, you know, a social media influencer, that's what we are on YouTube and Twitch and all that. Don't say influencer. I, it is 100% the job. Oh, but. Influencer. Influencers are people who, like, will flash their watches that the watch company paid them. And be like, oh, yeah, this is my nice, whatever the fuck. I, I flash the There's... ideology the ideology company made me. <laughs> They sent it to me in a nice book called Desktop was, Pal or something. Um, I was approached I was approached by a watch company that was like, oh, we make wooden watches with a wooden thing, and they look like nice watches, and I don't know. That's they they just seem kind of sketchy. Understandable. I've I can't say anything. I've been sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. I'm tainted. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tainted. Yeah, but you like streamed right after that being like, yeah, here's why Raid is a piece of shit. <laughs> They offered me another, another sponsorship. <laughs> yeah, they don't. Fucking care. They don't. They don't know and they don't care. They're just like, get people to sign up for a video yeah, you know game. What? I Surfshark sponsors me regularly. Like they've been my most consistent sponsor, the VPN, and I get comments all the time being like, "Can't you get any sponsors other than a VPN?" It's like, yeah, I can, but like the VPN is the most consistent. It's like, like at the end of the day, the, the reality is all the VPNs are fucking the same. It doesn't fucking matter. Just get a VPN. I appreciate if you use the one that I advertised to you, but they're all the fucking same. 
Brain Shadow Legends ends up everywhere sooner or later. It ends up in your cupboards. Um, I, I, I turned them down. I actually responded to their email being like, I will advertise for you as long as I can like inject enough sarcasm to make it clear to my audience that I absolutely despise you. And I actually got the response saying like, I will check with the marketing team to see whether or not that is something that we're willing to do. And then they like responded a couple days later being like, yeah, that's not something we're interested in doing. I'm like, yeah, I know, man. That was just me saying no in a snarky way. I need to, oh God, what would I? Unfortunately, the ones they've offered me are the ones that like, they have to have a turnover. So like you have to have a certain number of people who are, you know, downloading oh, I... it. I always say no to that because I'm not a very good salesman at all, even for something that I do believe in. Yeah, I'm not either. I'm just so I'm just like, no, if, if there's a requirement before I get paid, no. I just I just have to wonder with like as much fame as Kyle Rittenhouse got from everything. He's he has to have set himself up for life at this point. And it, well, that's gross according to, to about. according to his lawyers, he's broke. How? However, well, so this is this is the thing they're saying he's broke but he's like kind of the center of i think he's being sued right now for something i forget by what the, like by the families i guess there's a lot of stuff going on in his life where it makes good legal sense for him to present himself as being broke publicly mm -hmm. but he's probably not there's there is no feasible way that he is broke. This is like when I was I was going over the Boogie documentary and like looking at his finances, so, the way he laid them out and then going like. So Wampa 77 says social media influencers typically end up creating an OnlyFans page at some point in their career. I'm waiting, guys. Rhino so, mentioned uh, it already. Yeah. Going back to uh, what we said earlier in the stream about uh, OnlyFans.com slash Vice Rhino and Cirrus about uh, I forget what it was. It was like you. I said something about or something. I, I said something about um I remember. Oh, you spilled your beer. Oh, yes. And I, I said, don't worry, everywhere. I'll never I'll never miss your mouth. Yes, yes, you'll never miss my mouth. Onlyfans.com slash vice for our service. Um I just it, so when I when I went over the boogie documentary and he was doing his finances thing, like this is how much I get from YouTube and this is uh how much I survive off of, and I like I looked at his numbers, I compared them to my numbers, knowing what my RPM is like, looked through all of his stuff and went, there's no fucking way. There is, there is no fucking way at this stage with these numbers that you have managed to dig yourself this hard in this situation. There are so many avenues you are literally not using. And if you're in a hard situation, either go to OnlyFans.com slash Vice Ryan and Suris or give to Project Share. <laughs> That's a situation that would get you hard, Rhino. That's different. Yes, okay. <laughs> um, but just it's it's the same thing with the Rittenhouse thing. There's no way he's drunk because as somebody who, you know, has a measure of notoriety on the internet, however small, I know what to do at a certain level of, of notoriety. Yeah. Like, hey, if, a certain number of I, people know me, I can do this. It'd be so fucking easy to make money with the name Kyle Rittenhouse. As like, long as you're willing to sell out your to soul a, to the right wing. License it out to a porn company. Well, license... he wrote a book. Of course he did. <laughs> yeah. Don't... He should have done the OJ thing, well, like, if I did that's it. His, his avatar is the picture that's on the cover of the book, which, like, that's not a flattering picture. Like, you couldn't get a better picture of yourself, It looks man? like an old-timey mugshot. It what well, was let's see. Uh Kyle Rittenhouse book. Images. Yeah, that's it's called acquitted. That's a terrible picture. Old Gus says looks like, like time check in his YouTube chat still working. So no, we're on because we're on Rhino's channel, I don't want to layer the chats up on my end. It, it looks weird when you do that. He looks like he had a stroke in this picture. Like the left half of his face, well, uh, his left side of his face, right side when you're looking at it's it. Very looks asymmetrical. Like it's very asymmetrical. Droopy. Like it, like half of his face is drooping. Anyway. Does he look like he got hit by the entire legal system? 
I think this is the last uh, last tweet. Charlie Martin says, you people don't stand for your flag or country or Pledge of Allegiance, or you people who don't stand for your flag or country or Pledge of Allegiance are insufferable, simply rootless urban parasites who refuse to honor and respect the people who fought for your freedom. Um, now, this was on threads, and I saw it, and a bunch of veterans replied to this, being like, no, actually, we fought for the freedom to, like, not stand for the pledge if you don't want to, because that's what freedom actually means. Like, you are free, free to be not free. Yeah, like, freedom doesn't mean you have to conform to societal expectations. Freedom means you can not do that if you don't want to. And uh, this person didn't understand that. He would argue with veterans being like, no, that's not what you fought for. And you're just like, bro, I'm the one that went out there. Yeah. And people have to be so right. They are just wrong all the time. Yeah, but it's like, these people, they don't, the people that are most, the people whose dicks get the most hard when they hear the word freedom are the people who least understand what the word freedom even fucking means. Because they, in their mind, freedom is always operating within the parameters of what they deem is okay. That's what freedom means. Well, I wouldn't do that, so surely nobody else would want to do that. So, Avalon of Babylon says, uh, go to DDLG Playground and use coupon code Surus. He's literally their only partner anymore <laughs> because his audience is such a D-Gen that is like, yeah, no, the partner program doesn't work for us anymore, but this guy did some sales. It works for them. <laughs> that was such a weird email to get. They were like, yeah, we grandfathered the program out. It didn't make a whole lot of money, but your code gets used, actually, so you can keep it. What? Okay. Sure. Neat. All right. <laughs> so yeah, that was the last tweet. And uh so we're we're done with the tweets. Thank you so much for your donations to uh Project Share. I appreciate that. Hover does not appreciate that because share.viceround.com seems to not be working anymore, but the bots have been spamming it in the chat, so you should be able to find it. It'll work one way the or another. I don't know what the fuck is wrong with that. If you want to send me news articles, send it to um, news at viceround.com. But that's, again, Hover hosting that. So maybe I'll get it. Maybe I won't. My brain. Who fucking knows with how they work? My brain is corrupted. I didn't hear if you want to send me news. I heard if you want to send me news. I mean, if you want to send me news, you can send them there, too. But I'm not going to show them on stream. He'll just he'll just go with his uh, his partner and judge them in the back rooms. Yeah, we'll have some fun with that. Um, yeah, no, actually, um, nope, it's lost. My, my thought is gone. Rosalie hey, Keller sent 499 says, Kyle Rittenhouse looks like John from Jane and John from the debunking evolution creation series. I'm not, from oh, oh yeah, those guys, John and Jane from Genesis Apologetics. Memory holes. And Jess says, Cirrus, don't act like you didn't know we were a special level of degenerate. Oh, I knew. I, I knew. 100%. Ah. Oh. Oh. Don't do that. Okay, can we... Nope. Trying to trying to find the way to, to exit the stream? No, I'm... No, I know how to exit the stream. I want to show a picture of John and Jane. And said he's an official porn artist. Of course, his chat is degenerate. Look. You're only official because I've paid you for work that isn't porn. And said you can't unsee it, thanks. Well, now soon everybody won't be able to unsee it. Eventually, Rhino will get to the uh, point where he can show it. There they go. There it is. It's the guy. The guy. Oh there. my god! Yeah. He looks. He just looks like Rittenhouse. Yep. Oop. That's... Why is he... He looks so sad. And also half of his face looks like it doesn't work. So that works. It... Yeah. Is that what we're going to call that now? Getting Rittenhouse? Having a stroke is getting Rittenhouse. Yeah. That feels awful to think of, and now nobody can unsee it. You know what? I have a wife who died of a stroke, so I'm allowed to make jokes about that. You know, I can't... 
I can't stop you. <laughs> okay. Jesus. Thank you so much for joining me. Please give money to charity so that you can be less terrible people than I am. Because I'm apparently a terrible person, according to the stream so far. According to all lo known laws of aviation. Like, nobody's called me out for it, but, like, I know I've been a terrible person on the stream. And I'm sorry. You guys need to donate to charity <laughs> to make up for it. Hey, I just quickly want to give a thank you to all of my wonderful patrons who keep this show running. YouTube and Twitch are a pretty bumpy ride at the best of times, and the stability a Patreon provides me is worth more than I can say here. I'd also like to thank each and every one of my $20 and up patrons here, and they would be Britzkrieg, Cameron, Dren, Jemshin, Smiling DM, Poundini, Mabity Babity, Naomi, Isaac, Agamotto, Jordan, Ravi, Giuni, Kiratorian, Prisma, all of you. Sagittarius, I'm not saying that part. And Starlight. And finally, thank you to everyone else that helps keep this channel alive. While you're here, why not check out another video? And thank you for watching.